Fertility Chats with Dr. Kubis Kutsia at Beta Lab in KZN. I'm Dr. Kutsia. Thanks, Nadia. Um, nice to end off uh, the series. Yes. We started in KZN and we are ending off in KZN again. Definitely. So today we'll be discussing IVF. So Dr. Kutsia, can you maybe tell us a bit more about what is IVF? Yeah, Nadia, IVF is one of the um, procedures that we can do for patients that struggle to fall pregnant. So the big group of uh, procedures are called ART, which is uh, um, assisted reproductive techniques. And that basically means anything that you do to sperm, eggs, embryos, in helping couples to fall pregnant. IVF specifically would mean that we take some eggs out from a patient, we go to the lab, and we fertilize it with sperm and then make embryos and those potential babies we then later on put back into the uterus. Okay, so um, I know there's frozen embryo transfers and fresh embryo transfers. Um, which is best would you recommend, a fresh embryo transfer or a frozen one and what is the difference? Yeah. So, Whenever we made embryos, during that specific cycle that we collect eggs from a patient, um, we call that a fresh cycle. So when we've just collected it, um, cultured it in the lab for five days, and then put back into the uterus within that same cycle, that's called a fresh transfer. Now there's a few things that needs to happen for you to be able to do that. And one of those would be to check the hormonal levels because we know normally when we try and do IVF, we try and um, stimulate more than one egg. And when you have a lot of eggs growing with high hormonal levels, and sometimes the progesterone level, for example, can go up prematurely, which will date the lining differently. And then when you put an embryo back, um, it will not work. So in general, a fresh transfer, the results are less compared to a frozen embryo transfer cycle. A frozen embryo transfer cycle uh, means that you've collected these eggs in a previous cycle, you've made your little embryos, you've frozen them, so they uh, is in storage in the lab, and then you can put those embryos back into the uterus of the recipient in two ways. You can either do a medicated frozen embryo transfer cycle where we basically give medication to knock out the ovaries so that your own ovaries don't produce hormones. We take basically control of your cycle. We build up the lining. As soon as that lining is uh, thick enough, we normally aim for eight millimeters in thickness. Then we introduce the progesterone. And the progesterone will then determine when the transfer will happen because it dates the uh, endometrial lining. That is a medicated frozen embryo transfer cycle, but we can also do a, a natural cycle. Okay. And that's where we basically use the patient's own eggs, own ovulation, to track that ovulation. And as soon as we've had ovulation, then determine when to do the uh, embryo transfer. Okay. With the second one, the natural one, obviously we use far less medication, so it's more convenient and less costly for the patients. Okay. And dating back to history, when did IVF come into play and do you know when the first IVF baby was born? Well, I think I was born. <laughs> So that was uh, Louise Brown is the first uh, IVF baby born and I think that's um, odd 40 odd years ago in 1978 I think was the birth of Louise Brown. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, Professor uh, Edwards and Steptoe or something like that um, was involved with that and yes, uh, since, since then um, approximately 8 million uh, IVFs uh, uh, babies born since then. Um, I saw statistics that say about 500,000 uh, new births per year. You know, wow, from IVF, that's yeah. incredible. So would you say IVF is a guarantee? 
Yeah, unfortunately, nothing in life is a guarantee. Um, IVF is definitely a procedure that can be done for patients struggling to fall pregnant. And it obviously depends on what is the indication. You know, if, you're, um, if you've got blocked tubes, and that was uh, the first indication to do IVF um, for patients with blocked tubes, and you've got a good ovarian reserve, and you've got good sperm, then your chances of having a baby is very good. And yes, it may not happen the first cycle, but that is the benefit of IVF, because you can super ovulate the ovaries, meaning get more than one egg, make more than one embryo, and that will give you multiple chances at for your pregnant. Okay, and what are the risks involved with IVF? Yeah. So IVF, because we're trying to get more than one egg, the most common um, uh, risk is overstimulation. And we call it OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which can be fatal. And, but luckily these days, uh, we are able to modify our stimulation protocol and more important, the trigger injection that we give for the final maturation of those ovaries to make it a very safe procedure and uh, everybody should strive to have an uh, OHS free clinic, you know, uh, not to have any uh, um, serious uh, side effects. So what is OHS means? Okay. How would you know you have it? Yeah, so obviously the doctor should know before he starts the stimulation um, to adjust the medication. Um, we specifically, our polycystic ovary patients, we, we know they've got very high AOH levels. Um, and if we just give uh, uh, one dose to everybody, then um, you potentially you can overstimulate. Overstimulation means there are too many follicles growing and, and the ovary starts weeping and that releases fluid into the abdomen. And as I said, it can be life threatening. And therefore, your doctor must scan regularly, um, monitor the growth of the follicles, look for any fluid that may be released uh, behind the uterus. That's the first sign. For our patients, uh, when we are worried about ovarian hyperstimulation, we will ask them to do their weight and, and see, because a sudden increase in the weight is a sign that the patient is withholding fluid or leaking fluid, and that may be the first sign. And then we can either stop the stimulation, we call it coasting, we go by the coast, <laughs> wait for a while and see whether the uh, uh, levels come down. We also do hormonal levels, but the most important is the trigger uh, injection. There is a specific injection that we can give to prevent that, as well as other medication to try and prevent a very stimulation. Doctor, do you have a take-home message for our viewers today? Yeah, I would think uh, people don't have to be scared about IVF. We have lots of patients come into the clinic and when you ask them, what can I do for you today? They say, we're yet to have a baby, but please not IVF, you know? <laughs> and I think um, that's not the right attitude. Mm -hmm. I think you should allow your fertility specialist to assess your problem and I hope when I see patients and I've explained to them what their problem is so that they can see the benefit if necessary whether to undergo IVF. So have an open mind, choose your fertility specialist, make sure you get lots of information from them and uh, if you need to get more information Go onto our website and subscribe and uh, look at all the videos and all the information that's available. Yeah, there really is some very informative videos on the www.vitalab.com website and you can also pop into any of their clinics in Sands and or in Schlanger.